The HP Labs, we've talked to them in the past year about some of the Mashandra Khan, who will be on later of this, as fellows here. They've been doing this for a while. They've been playing around this, with this energy, you know, efficient mindset. It's been always been a, an HP Labs project in the labs. Right, right. Um, you know, so going to market is something that's been a challenge for HP Labs. What attracted HP Labs and HP as an organization to you guys? What, what was the, the one thing that you guys nailed that you can point to and talk about specifically in the technology? I think it's, uh, it's finally possible now. Uh, you can check the box on uh, good enough performance for server workloads, but uh, the, uh, the aspect that really got their attention, I think, is our fabric technology and the, uh, the, the way that you can actually scale this out with uh, minimal overhead uh, in terms of network costs, network latency, uh, and it's that piece that allows you to pack these in really tight uh, so you can get, be very dense. You can uh, shrink. Uh, uh, he showed ten racks uh, shrinking down to half a rack, for instance. Uh, so th that was the uh, invention that we brought to the table. That that really sort of was the the final piece. That so back up and let me, hit the, let me hit the pause button on that. So you just said taking ten racks of servers down to one, to a half of a rack, to a half of a rack. Right. That's kind of the innovation. So and for the folks who didn't see the demo because they didn't live stream 20, it. 20 to 1. They had this huge set of uh, data center racks, and then they powered them down to essentially half a rack. Pretty impressive demo. 2,800-plus servers in a, in a rack, right, uh, versus, say, we're talking tens of servers. I don't know, what, 30? Right. Call it 40. 40. Let's give them 45. Right. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that's pretty dramatic. Now, the, yeah, each of these uh, 2,880 servers in Iraq uh, maxes out around 5 watts. Uh, that's all in for the, uh, the processor, the, the chipset, the memory, uh, the, the fabric, everything. So when you, when you do the comparisons with traditional servers, you're, you're increasing dramatically the server count. So immediately you think, oh, wow, it must be way more expensive. But it's not. Uh, and it's because you're sharing resources in that in that in that chassis, right? That's right. So we've uh, we've built it from the beginning to scale. So we built it with a cluster in mind, not just a, a, a low power single node. Uh, the uh, the technology is is uh, orders of magnitude lower power than what you're starting with. Uh, you need more of them to make up the gap in performance. Uh, but uh, the workloads that we're targeting are throughput oriented, and they uh, they're scale out uh, oriented in terms of uh, how they uh, uh, build out in performance. And so the, the net savings is significant. Uh, HP was showing uh, something like a 90% cost or say, uh, power reduction, 90% space reduction, uh, 60 plus percent uh, cost reduction. So John, we have, a, we have a big audience that just joined us. We have about 550 people watching. So we probably should reset and tell them that yeah. we're here at HP Labs. John, why don't you reset? Okay, okay. we're here at HP Labs in uh, Palo Alto, California, building one of HP. And behind us is the office of the founders, Bill Hewlett, Dave Packard. And here, we're here with the CEO of Calza, Calzada. Cal Calzada, sorry, <laughs> uh, who is the company that's on stage with HP introducing a new chipset that is just going to change the game in server performance, taking a, what's the rack size? Ten? Uh, ten, ten racks down ten to, a half racks a rack. to a half a rack in the server business, mostly known in the mobile business. ARM, which is uh, low energy uh, chips, uh, is now coming to server class scale architecture, and uh, we're here discussing that. And you guys talk about the implications of the HP deal. What does this mean for your business? And you guys, just to be clear, you guys provide Calzada provides the secret sauce to take that ARM chip, which is a mobile phone cell phone chip, and then you you add the secret sauce to make it server class data center ready. That's right. Right? And we've been working on that for four years. So. Okay. So this is not something that you just no, dreamed just up dream, last dream week. Up <laughs> not at all. So, so what kind of lead do you think you have? One of the things John and I were talking about is, you know, Intel's not here, although HP said, well, Adam's on the roadmap. Sure, sure. What kind of lead do you think you have on, on Intel? Um, hard to say. I think uh, based on HP's endorsement today, they uh, uh, must believe that uh, there's some something viable here in this technology and and uh it's hard to quantify right because they get a big boatload of cash that they could put at this thing but it's not just trying. cash right i mean, I mean it's not like intel hasn't seen this coming i mean they've been watching this trend well, for i think a while. uh this is just a piece of an even bigger story you see uh the the arm architecture uh growing up from its power uh, optimized orientation um in the pc arena power starting to matter everywhere of course uh, so uh, some analysts are talking about uh, ARM-based notebooks, ARM-based desktops, right? We're, we're, we're focused on the server. Uh, so I think uh, the, the architecture itself uh, is very interesting and viable. 
uh, as uh, as it grows up in performance and can tackle all these workloads. And uh, the business model is certainly interesting. Uh, the uh, architecture is available to uh, lots of licensees that can go off and, and optimize and target specific uh, applications or specific sub-segments of, of uh, different spaces. Mm-hmm. It's a hard problem you guys are tackling here. Obviously, Intel's not even, not even up there yet. Uh, so when you guys sat back and started designing this, you know it's a hard problem. When did you have that moment and say, damn, this is, we could do this? And what breakthrough did you guys get through and say, hey, okay, this is viable? Can you just share your story there? I think um, I think we always had the the confidence that that this could be done. We we saw the the future of uh, the ARM technology and and uh, where process technology was going. Um, certainly, when we first engaged uh, the market, we were hearing questions back like, "What's ARM?" Right? Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody heard of that in the server space. Uh, so we we had quite a bit of, of education to do, and I think. Uh, the market was was very skeptical for uh, a long time, and then uh, really, I'd credit the uh, uh, the Microsoft announcement in in January about supporting uh, Windows 8 on ARM in the client side uh, as really being a, a tipping point that captured uh, everybody's imagination that uh, this will be a viable architecture in the, in the whole PC arena. Well, what about Microsoft? Um, they're obviously missing from the early list anyway. Uh, you've got, you, when you look at the list of software players here, it's, it's the emerging Hadoop ecosystem mm-hmm. and all the cool stuff, right? <laughs> I mean, Microsoft's not cool or what? John and I talk about it all the time. But, but you know, do you expect, you know, within the next uh, two to three years that, 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 the, that Microsoft will jump on board? Or are they just playing catch up here? Or? Well, I think the... Uh the applications that we're seeing where this is a, is a great fit, um, a lot of greenfield applications, it's predominantly Linux. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, application stacks are, are built on that. Uh, so that's, uh, that's where the, the gravity is right now uh, for these uh, small, very power-efficient ARM-based servers scaled out. Yeah, that's where the action is. We'll be at Hadoop World next week, and uh, it'd, be, it'd be a great event for us. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, activity going on there, and that seems to be the the software suppliers that are that are partnering with you in terms of... So, uh, you know, HP has a division they call it the Industry Standard Servers, which is kind of an oxymoron because the standard servers have been based on old chipset mentality, right? So yeah. you look at, like, uh, you know, I'm old enough to remember the PC revolution. So, you know, I remember the PC microprocessor, x86, grew up and servers came out because they were cheaper and expensive than Unix. And then that became the Wintel server growth. But, and Blades got smaller, faster, but same architecture. Um, can you talk about for the folks out there the implications for the marketplace relative to this new architecture? Because obviously shrinking down into a footprint saves energy. Data centers are expensive, real estate and power. I mean, these, are, these are really important problems that you're solving. But talk about the implications of the industry in terms of the, the trends that and the use cases that this is going to power. Well, I think uh, here initially uh, there's a set of applications that are going to take off with this uh, that will scale linearly with uh, with nodes and Hadoop and big data type applications are, are great ones. And Cantor Fitzgerald was talking about uh, their problem and how they're trying to sift through today's data and yesterday's data and going all the way back. They have a huge data challenge. Uh, looking forward, uh, when you see the uh, evolution of uh, the ARM technology and roadmap that, that companies like us can leverage, uh, you, you can really see those applications and workloads, uh, that list starting to grow, uh, and uh, potentially over time uh, being able to address uh, all the interesting and relevant spaces in the server market. And because you can uh, get the power and the space way, way down, uh, today you have uh, something like 50 million servers installed. Uh, you can imagine uh, 10 times that infrastructure, uh, a billion server era, if you will, in the future. I think I think that's going to be a very interesting implication in terms of what you can do with all that processing power without all the impact from uh, cost and space and and, uh, energy. A lot of people have been talking about, and Dave and I have been particularly covering the whole flash SSD market. They Mm -hmm. showed the actual product, which we have pictures of, and we'll get photos up on the net as soon as Mark Hopkins can get them downloaded off my camera. But uh, interesting design. You have to think about the multifunctional components of servers. It's not just you know, board, processor. you got SSDs now. What, are the, what challenges do you see going forward? Obviously, solid-state memory is going to change the memory landscape in terms of caching and application level. What do you see as the challenges going forward at the next couple, uh, you know, 20-mile journeys that you guys have to take in the marketplace? Yeah, the, um, uh, 
the, the move to Flash is, is happening now. It's, uh, it's been expensive, and there have been uh, technology uh, challenges with making it work in a sort of enterprise class server environment. Those, those, are, those are being solved, and, and uh, when we look forward, we see uh, companies moving wholesale over to, uh, to Flash. And uh, certainly that's a huge power savings. And, and what we see is when you take the, the power of the drives even out of the equation, uh, you get the, uh, the, the power of uh, our solutions down even further. And so uh, that, that's significant for us. Uh, we, uh, uh, initial, this initial set of workloads uh, we're very well suited for. Uh, we've got some uh, technologies in the hopper for uh, another generation that are going to add to those uh, and uh, really extend and build out uh, on the, the goodness of our fabric. Uh, and then in the future, ARM just announced uh, last week 64-bit uh, uh, on their roadmap, right, so right. Uh, we think that will uh, again open up even more uh, applications and, and workloads when we deploy Somebody that. Describe it as an inverted pyramid, right? You're going to have you know the, the 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 few mega scale buyers step up initially. Um, you guys obviously see them as um, leading indicators. Is that right of uh, future data centers? They are. <laughs> I think uh, uh, certainly there's the the mega scale uh, folks that. Uh, are deeply capable all the way down uh, to the lowest levels of software. Uh, but what also I think is interesting is you're seeing the financial services uh, companies start to step up. Uh, Cantor Fitzgerald was uh, on the panel today. That was surprising, right? You wouldn't expect to, that they would be hopping uh, on this technology. They have uh, huge, huge problems in uh, space and power and lots and lots of data to analyze. And so I think uh, enterprise IT can probably relate a little more to uh, a, a financial services company than a, than a giant uh, hyperscale final internet question, company. Final question for you, because we have our next guest, we're on tight schedule, is for the folks out there who are in the industry, who are in the weeds with the ARM technology, ARM is a hot thing, everyone here ARM, you know, Steve Jobs mentioned that he chose ARM over Intel right, right. Right for the iPad, and they think of it as mobile. So, you know, people think mobile, they think, you know, I want battery life, and if anyone's got an iPhone or an Android phone, know which one's got better battery life, right? So um, that's battery power to the consumer. Share with folks what, what, why is ARM so hot, and, and two, what impact will it have for their lives, um, just in general, just you know, kind of a high level. Uh, so from a technology standpoint, just quickly, the, the reason that, uh, that ARM has such a uh, better profile from a power and battery life is uh, it was built with off as the default, and you turn things on when you need it versus the, the other way around with the uh, current technologies. Uh, but the, uh, the ARM business model uh, makes the uh, CPU investment, uh, takes that CPU investment that ARM does, and it makes that available to uh, a huge number of companies that uh, can take that and target and optimize and build uh, highly integrated, uh, very efficient products for a, a much smaller space or, or segment versus a, a horizontal approach of a uh, People say purpose-built. You mean like purpose-built exactly. like machines, right? Or products. And, uh, and the goodness is that it's still architecturally consistent with uh, all the other ARM implementations for other spaces. So you get the, uh, the virtue of that, uh, of that software development and that virtuous cycle. So you're starting to see that really accelerate now. So the benefit then would be more products faster in the marketplace? More products, more competition, uh, more cost competitive for OEMs that are buying them. Uh, all those things. Well, Barry, thanks for coming on. Barry Evans, CEO uh, and, and one of the founders of, of Calzada. We have uh, your VP of Marketing, Carl's coming on a little later, too, right, I believe. Right, right. So uh, thanks for spending some time with us. We'll be watching. Very exciting. And, uh, again, congratulations. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thanks all for right. coming on theCUBE. Good to talk to you.